Here's an older piece some of you might not have seen. Hellboy's Liz Sherman, the comic book version. She's wearing straight latex this time, not PVC, so it's very tight. The light is coming from off her right side again. But there's fire coming from her hands, since that's her ability in the book. Eventually, rendering like this will become second nature for you guys the more you do it. There aren't too many wrinkles this time around, but I use a lots of cross-hatching and feathering. The reason being, because typically in comics, cross-hatching is used to imitate a gray color with your lines, so if you make your lines very tight, and you don't have a colorist, you should be able to get a smooth gradient of black to white. Again, we are going to start with a nice outline around the character. Oftentimes when I'm in a hurry, I won't draw the white wrinkles and I'll just make big black blotches and then slice wrinkles across the body with a white pen. So you'll see what I mean in a minute. But the rules of what we did in the last one apply to this one as well. I'm going to start with the chest and that's going to collect the most light, but that being the most elevated part of the body. and the light is coming from this side. The main light source anyway. And remember, the lights themselves just move with the contour of the body's natural shapes. fire. I did a pretty cool effect here which I still am a big fan of even though the piece is so old. Her armpit is on the back side of her and her underarm so we're going to leave a bit of light for that. We are just going to highlight the abdomen area here. Keep that white line running through, that's where the light is. Her belt was negative space in the final piece. I did a series of homeboy pictures and I tried to give each piece a bit of negative space as the theme of it. And I used a lot of negative space back then. I actually don't do it that much these days. But I was totally in love with the effect. I still love it. Just don't have too many opportunities to use it anymore. on the clothes are going to poke out a bit. So 
so the light is from back here. You can see that our lighting is more or less consistent. The lines are going to be very small, so I'm not even going to bother too much with trying to keep them highlighted in this stage since I'll just come back with a white pen and put the lights in. But if you don't have a white pen, I would definitely recommend drawing in your highlights ahead of time. Before you get to the actual linking stage. So what did I just draw this line here for? The reason I drew this line is the dual line on her shoulder is for the shine and the color of the suit itself, while the outer line, which is right here, is where the color of the fire or outside light source is placed. And here's the light, and here's the color of the outfit. We'll see what I mean as soon as we put the ink on it. And always try to separate your foregrounds and your backgrounds, even on your characters, to give them some depth. So I didn't just attach the shoulder right here to her torso. I left a line of space, which isn't necessarily a light, but it just breaks it up visually. Separating the chest from the top of the rib cage with just a simple line through it. So it all just doesn't become one black piece. And doing that effect is perfectly okay, by the way. If your camera is zoomed out far enough from your characters, I do that a lot of the time. Just render your character as a silhouette, basically. Wrinkles gather a bit around the crotch area since there's tension there where the two legs are. And now the cross hatching. Remember if you make your lines tight enough, it can almost be a gray color. And that is exactly what you want. As soon as we're done with this step, we are going to add our white wrinkles and you'll see how it ends up making sense. Instead of just being one big long bodysuit thing. This section fades out. 
the arm opens up so the shadow inside the wrinkles widens until there is no shadow and that opens up for the color of the outfit itself. Underside of the hand. Underside is going to be in shadow. Just going to black most of it out. But leave the center with a bit of a light in it, almost a gray color. I'm going to highlight the corners of her fingers, the bottom of her thumb. When the finished piece was done, I had a fiery effect around it. Also done with ink. side as well. Now we are going to add the zipper and the rest of the stripes or other wrinkles. conforms to the body so it juts out a bit at the rib cage since that comes forward kind of makes a bow bow and arrow kind of shape at the abdomen like I said I do this kind of technique when I'm in a hurry of just slashing all the white lines in. But if you know what you're doing, you can still look very realistic and very shiny, which I know everybody loves. Everybody loves shiny stuff. These are going to be the wrinkles under her armpits, coming across the chest. Every wrinkle you make has to have some kind of a purpose. With the little dots, the little lights, the lens flares, you can have fun with that. But the wrinkles themselves have to make sense. There's tension right across her torso, her waist area. So those are reflected in the shadows. Or rather in the white ink. That was more or less the idea of that. Here's a piece I did back in 2012 of Supergirl and Batgirl. Batgirl being inspired by a cosplayer I'm quite fond of by the name of Night S. Rouge. All the rules of what we've learned up to now apply. Remember, whenever your fabric starts wrinkle, we see white streaks across them indicating the wrinkle. And 
She actually has construction notes of the outfit. I can't remember if it was PVC or latex, but I assume it was latex because it wrinkled a bit differently than our last piece, which was a um, latexy thing. I think this one is PVC. start with our outline. Again, light source is coming from the right. I seem to do that a lot. Have the light source coming from the right side for my pinups. So we are going to isolate the shadows to the left side. But the inside of her body, the rest of it, inside of the cape, since it's inside of the cape, isn't so affected by the light as much as her arm, which is peeking out of there. Remember to put your highlights in. Draw them in first if you have to. As you get more experience with it, you can just make them up as you go since you will have mastered or at least had some experience with where to place all of your highlights. Typically the biggest areas when I draw them, I will have a bigger streak of light going through them. Such as the legs. Brought this down a bit far, but we can light it out. Separate your foreground from your background. The legs shouldn't merge into each other. The highlights can indicate form and shape and direction. So we're gonna make this one right at her hip swivel. So that way it looks like the leg is coming towards us. just her cape. But on that note, uh, let's go inside of the cape a bit and do some rendering as well. The cape has a seam running through it, Night S Rouge's cape. So we're going to draw around the cape. Or at least I think it had a seam in it, but I drew it with a seam anyway, so we'll go with that. The cape is basically following the same rules of the rest of the stuff we've seen up to now. So I won't really go into too much detail about it. It's just following the contour of the body. You see the shadows appear on the shoulders. This would be the underside of the shoulder. Since the light is coming from up here. Light source. And if you color that, you can just place all of the uh, darker colors inside of the cape. part is something that you will see happen a lot with your le with your PVCs and latexes and leather as well. There will be a streak of light that runs down the thing again indicating its shape and for these I always like to draw them no matter how confident I get about my rendering skills.
Oh, the ankles now. You don't even have to add that much cross hatching if you like the way it looks like this. Sometimes I just leave it like this as well. always have to indicate form, like I said before. the bottom underside of the seam. And that about wraps it up for this video. Leave any questions you have below in the comments. I definitely recommend you watch my previous video on how to draw clothes. I will include the card up there or it probably already played by by now so you can go back and watch that or I will include a link in the description. We'll see. But definitely leave your comments and your suggestions for what else I should draw in my next video and if you need me to cover anything else also definitely let me know I'll be happy to make a sequel to this sequel you can make sure you check me out on all of my social media websites the link will be in the description box below you can see the finished versions of all of these pictures in their original versions as you saw them earlier on the social media sites as well DeviantArt, Facebook, Tumblr so on and so forth make sure you like subscribe and share this video subscribe to my channel Thank you for watching. Salam. Should we do some here?